Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here. And I came across an interesting article this morning while I was kind of checking up on the news that I wanted to talk about. And this is just me completely geeking out, completely nerding out because I love all things space related. I sort of fancy myself an amateur, I don't know, space enthusiast, or, or I guess not even amateur. I am a space enthusiast. I don't pretend to know all of the data that goes beyond or behind all of the sort of astronomical figures and things that are included in an article such as this, but it does... I think in reading it, give us a good idea about some things uh, that could be happening in our solar system. And I think it's worth highlighting that and talking about it just because it's fun to do. But also it's kind of mind blowing to me to think about the distances involved and what it could mean for our own understanding, again, of our solar system and our place within the galaxy and all that kind of stuff. But before I get into that, my alma mater ECU is playing NC State in the military bowl today. Go Pirates. I want to see them get that win. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but anyway, this article has some more information about the long theorized Planet X or Planet 9. So I can remember growing up hearing about this as sort of a, again, a theorized thing. And it's this idea that there's a planet that we have not yet identified in our solar system, this, this gigantic mysterious object that is somehow affecting the orbit of uh, objects in the Kuiper Belt, sort of on the outer edge of the solar system. So to put this into context, the distances that we're thinking about here, if you think about Pluto, which is no longer a planet, highly controversial in and of itself, but if you think about Pluto, it has an orbital period of like 270 years or, or somewhere in that neighborhood. This theorized planet, which has not been discovered, would have an orbital period of 10,000 to 20,000 years, which means that it would go way out, even beyond you know the Kuiper Belt and what we sort of understand uh, in terms of that orbit. But not as far, of course, as sort of the Oort cloud, which is sort of the boundary, the spherical boundary of objects that is technically defined as the edge of the solar system. I mean, if you think about the Voyager, I think it's Voyager 2 probe, it is now considered to be an interstellar space where the sun's influence isn't measured in nearly the same way as it would be in the inner solar system. But it has not gotten close to reaching the edge of the Oort cloud, which once you get beyond that, in my mind, you truly are outside of any kind of influence of the solar system. But anyway, there's an interesting article here that talks about this. And I guess there's new information out there to suggest that, that this could be a real thing, that Planet X could be a real thing, right? And so there's an astronomer here named Mike Brown at Caltech. And here's what he's got to say about it. The most visually striking evidence for this planet, Planet X, Planet 9, remains the earliest that the most distant objects beyond Neptune all have orbits that point in one direction. The study that's being referenced here tracks icy bodies subject to some kind of perturbation that's injecting them into the orbit of Neptune. And the term trans-Neptunian orbit is sort of used frequently in the article, meaning it kind of comes across that, that orbit. And Neptune is way out there within the solar system as well. Before they leave the solar system entirely, he says, if you look at these, or actually another astronomer back and says, if you look at these bodies, their lifetimes are tiny compared to the age of the solar system. That means something is putting them out there. And so what can it be? Now, some other astronomers in this article go on to say that, you know, there isn't a statistically significant number of these things being tracked to really fully suggest that there is a giant object that's doing this, right? They do say that we're right on the verge of what researchers who study quantitative uh, methods would say are statistically significant, but maybe we're not quite there yet. But these astronomers are saying that there is enough of this. Some of them are saying there's harsh disagreement about this, that there are enough of these to, to state or to, to indicate that some gigantic body or some gravitationally significant body is perturbing these objects' orbit. But it's always blown my mind that there could possibly be another major planet out there that we haven't been able to track. But if it does have an orbital period of 10,000 to 20,000 years, you know that means that it could be so far away and it could be reflecting so little light from the sun that it would be difficult for any of our instruments to actually pick it up visually and, and, to, and to see... I guess with visual confirmation, it's impact on other bodies that we could actually confirm that it's a real thing. Some other astronomers are suggesting that these perturbed bodies, which are orbiting in a way that doesn't make sense and would suggest that a gravitationally significant object is impacting them, uh, suggest that there could be something called galactic tide that's impacting this, where other stars in our galaxy and sort of the, the plane of our solar system within that causes objects to be shifted. Most scientists say that that seems to be an unlikely explanation. Um, another theory, and I'm reading from the article here, other theories propose that the anomalies everyone's trying to explain are due to something else entirely, such as a primordial black hole, which is mortifying and terrifying, if that's even a possibility, a real thing, created just after the Big Bang that our solar system captured as it moved across the galaxy. Another idea suggests that there might be something wrong with science's current understanding of gravity. That, to me, seems like a much more, I don't know, 
half-baked kind of idea. Though, if you think about dark energy and the fact, and dark matter, and the fact that we can't fully explain that, maybe there's some merit to that. But really what it comes down to is sort of the, the observation I was making earlier. And here's what one scientist says. The sky is a really, really big place when you're looking for something so painfully dim. Again, because it's reflecting so little light from the sun. This thing is something like 100 million times less bright than Neptune. That's really pushing toward the edge of what's possible with the absolute largest telescopes in the world right now. However, they do mention in this article that a new telescope is coming online in 2025 that might be able to, or will be able to scan the entire sky over several over the course of several days, several nights, and give us a more in-depth picture of what might be out there. So anyway, this is me just being rambly and super excited on a rainy uh, Saturday morning as I sort of uh, drink coffee and catch up on the news. But I'm just curious about what you think. I've always been super fascinated by the idea of Planet X, Planet Nine, and I kind of want to write a book, a novel centered around that and the idea of what it does when it, you know, periodically, given its humongous orbit and how long it takes to come back toward uh, the solar system itself, the inner solar system and the sun, what it, what it could harbor and what its impacts could be. But again, I'm completely nerding out, completely geeking out here. Uh, and of course, this is a little bit different than what my content typically is for the channel, which is focused on movies and games and that kind of stuff. But anyway... If you're also a super nerd like me and you love this kind of stuff, what do you think about the existence of Planet Nine? Is it a real thing? Do you think that eventually we'll actually have some evidence that that, it, that it's out there and that it is causing significant uh, changes to the solar system when it makes its way through? So just curious what your thoughts are on that. Thanks for bearing with me as I ramble through this excitedly uh, this morning. And as always, thanks so much for watching.